Do you like board games with engines? More engines? Bird engines? Or are you someone who simply likes small box card games with plenty of punch and strategy to them? Well, this is a game that lures you in by the eyes with its blue azure colored play mat, which also doubles really well as a bath towel. It's even got plenty of cabooses too, up to 10 to choose from in fact. Well, let me introduce to you a game with plenty of engines, engine building and steam engines. Hey Danny, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just training. Board game boxes make great weights, you know. Welcome to an island where the only mode of transport is by train. Want to walk down the street to get some groceries? Well, you have to take the train. Training around this island involves building a train that is optimized to carry passengers, coal, oil and cargo. You'll use different cards in your hand as currency to pay for different carriages that can be attached to your train engine. To improve your carriages you can also level them up by paying the difference in cost. This island thrives on helping each other out like a very old friends. Each carriage on a player's train has a special ability that activates when you load the matching good onto it. These could involve getting more cards into your hand or even further building, loading and engaging in delivery actions. When you've filled your train with the right combo of goods, you can deliver them to one of the locations on the map, fulfilling a primary contract. This gives you influence over that region. Now only you can fulfill the secondary contracts there, like some exclusive goods service agreement. Now, your train is definitely no Hogwarts Express service, as you also try to transport passengers to their desired stations at the same time. Get them there early to reap big bonuses. There is also a twist to this game. Not only can you use the actions of your train, you can load resources into your opponent's trains and gain those actions too. All in all, climbing aboard this combo-tastic cardboard box might be worth the price of fare after all. Isle of Trains is a stunning game that has a beautiful colour palette to it. As soon as you set this game up, it really draws your eyes in. I just love the use of the blues and it definitely has that kind of tycoon-like feel about it, which I absolutely love. Now, don't let this artwork deceive you because the thinkiness that is contained in this game is incredibly dense, incredibly tight, and one that really will get your brain tinkering and thinking. What I really love about this game is the fact that every single card has a cool ability on it. And the fact you can connect your carriages together into a train means that you can kind of synergize some of these abilities together. I also like the fact that you can put particular goods and trigger bonus actions and effects. The fact that you start with these four base actions of taking a card or a passenger, building, loading and delivering, those base actions get expanded exponentially throughout the game. The more powerful your carriages are, and if you can uh, load those carriages with the right goods by using uh, your hand of cards and deciding the pleth from the plethora of different options that you have in your hand and working out how to tuck things in, just creates a really cool chain reaction and cascading effect that I've not seen in many other games. And the fact that this game essentially is just a card game just really amazes me at how well connected this game is. And this is one of those games where when you play it for the first time, you think, hmm, I can do this and then I can get this particular action. I might get these extra cards in my hand and you might think, oh, is that all I can do? And then you look at your opponent's turn and then your opponent has all of a sudden done three things on their one turn and their turn starts to roll on and cascade and snowball. And you're like, whoa, I'm now starting to see how all these puzzle pieces fit together in all these different ways. And I think it comes down to the fact that a lot of these carriage cards give you bonus actions. You know, tucking in a coal into this um, hopper gives you two extra cards into your hand, which is two extra potential options, and gives you a bonus build action. So you could build another card into your train. Or it might be a card that gives you the option of delivering or loading again. And being able to load again means you can trigger another action in your train. And the fact that every time you load, that springboards onto other things means that this is almost like a really cool 1000 dot-to-dot -dot puzzle that seems to be connected in so many different ways. 
And what really expands this game even more, and I think is incredibly impressive, is that the fact that if there is a particular resource I need or a particular action bonus I need, and it's not in your train, you can look over at your opponent's train and go, oh, if I load my coal, giving them that resource, which is still quite powerful, so there is a bit of a trade-off, but you can gain five cards, an extra load action, an extra deliver action, which will free up some of the carriages in your train to do more things. And the fact that everyone's tableau is your tableau is such a cool little twist. And while some people might not like dabbling in other people's things, and I know a lot of a lot of us feel quite close to our possessions, it does give you that extra freedom of being able to go, oh, I really need this one extra thing and I really need this one extra action. I could do that just once, just so I can match up with whoever's in the lead. One of the particular features of this game that I really like is the multi-use functional cards. The fact that the building cards provide you with end game scoring conditions that give you extra points, but also they function also as all three goods. It's almost like a wild card. You can also see that on a lot of these train carriage cards, you can either pay the cost to build that particular train or upgrade it. You can look for, uh, use it for its ability or you can use it for its good. The fact that there are so many different ways this card can be used, you can even discard other cards from your hand to turn this card into a wild good, which can be tucked onto a carriage that you essentially need to fulfill to catch up with the other players. There is so much flexibility on every single card alone that this is almost like a Lego game. And the passengers in this game, whilst they look really cool, are actually there to provide you with bonus effects. I kind of mistakenly thought that when going into this game, it was all about delivering the passengers to their locations and trying to get all those bonuses. But actually, the passengers are just the icing on top of the cake. You can deliver things and then fulfill contracts and deliver a passenger to get that added bonus of extra resources that you might need to propel your engine further. And so these passengers are almost like catalysts for giving you extra things that you need to keep powering your train along. And now whilst I've sung this game's praises for a bit, I want to give you a few warnings before you jump aboard this train and see where it goes and see what exciting places it may lead you. I find that this game is probably best at the two player level and I love two player games. This definitely has a great two player feel about it because not only do you work on your train, but you can occasionally use the abilities from your opponent's train. The thing that really makes this a great two player game is the fact that your turns might take a long time. There's a lot of analysis paralysis. There's a lot of thinking through the best way to load your carriages to then give you the bonuses. And so I can see that if you're playing it at a three or four player level, this game might drag a long time. It's like those really big cargo trains that you see sometimes that have like 50 carriages behind. But at the two player level, there's just the right amount of thinking time in between your turn and your opponent's turn for you to work out what you're gonna do next. And so the turns come around a little bit more snappier. And as you build your train up, the turns are going to get longer and longer because there's more options and more things to think about. And as you gain more cards into your hand, and cards are a currency in this game for which you build and pay for things, every card, because there's so much information that you have to process, you know, playing at more than two plays might be quite um, a long slog because you've just got to wait for people to do the things that they want to do. Now, considering my final verdict, I was really surprised at the size of Isle of Trains. When it came, I was like, oh, this is a lot smaller than I thought. And that is actually a brilliant thing because I've always got room for small box games in my board game collection. I think this game is very well designed. There is so much synergy that happens amongst the cards themselves and the engine building really plays true to its theme. And while when you think of a train game is more of being connecting routes and delivering things, this game really focuses on the actual engine building alone, which I actually haven't seen before in a lot of other train games. And this is actually something that I really like about this game. I think that there is a lot of uh, thinkiness that's involved, so uh, get ready for your brain to kind of get a bit of a workout. But in terms of a rating, I would definitely say that Isle of Trains would be a 8.5 out of 10 for me. I've just loved 
playing this game. I've loved the experience and I've just loved just how everything's connected together. And it's a really great way to just really play a heavy strategy game with not a lot of setup, which is fantastic. Now, if you really found this video super helpful, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. And if you wanna uh, influence the direction in which this channel goes, please head over to my Patreon page and support me there. Thanks once again for joining me for another Board Game Sanctuary review. I really appreciate all the support and all the people who've co who always comment on my videos. It means a lot to me and it really warms me that I can share this joy with this hobby with all of you out there. Thanks once again for joining me for another video. Don't forget to check out the other videos on my channel. I'm sure there's something for everyone. This is Danny signing out. See you next time. Goodbye. What's that? I'm late for my train. Oh, see ya.